Welcome back. <laughs> Not welcome back, but welcome. It's just been a long time since we've done one of these videos, so I felt like I should welcome you back. This is Dark World. It's a reverb. The signal path is not 100% analog because, well, I don't really have a good answer besides I wanted to make a reverb and it sounds good. So we're doing it. We're doing it together, me and you. Um, so yeah, let's just talk about it. Uh, if you're familiar with our brother's pedal, you might recognize um, some similarities in the routing. Um, we have one channel here and another channel here. And you can, um, uh, you, you're able to turn the channels on individually, or you're able to tr turn the channels on and together and route them in series or in parallel. And um, each channel has three programs on them. So let's start with the dark channel here, which was um, designed by Tom Majeski at Cooper FX. Um, the world channel was designed by Robert Keeley's team. So it was a three-way collaboration. Probably should have said that, the, said that at the beginning. That's pretty important. But we're here now. And uh, I'm going to talk about the Dark Channel, which is Tom's channel. And Tom is a sweet little angel. And I just, oh, I just love him because he really brought this pedal to life. Um, the first program he sent us when uh, we were talking about the concept of what we wanted the pedal to sound like was the mod ch channel. And um, this was inspired by um, a pedal that he has called the Generation Loss. And it's this kind of warbly thing that is supposed to sound like a VHS cassette sort of um, running out of just not working anymore after uh, after being copied lots of times, after being copied over and over again. During generation loss. If you Wikipedia generation loss, it'll say something to that effect. That was the name of this pedal that this program's inspired by. Okay, so uh, the decay knob is just turning up uh, the decay, the reverb amount, um, so, I had the hall channel in parallel, uh, I just turned that off, and now we're doing the dark channel on its own. Uh, so if you turn this down, it's less and more. One thing I love about this particular program is it's kind of in between a reverb and a delay. I mean, it's more of a reverb, but there's it's kind of like discrete uh, re repeats that you hear a little bit, which I just love. And uh, this modify knob is like the amount of like warble and the noise and the stuff. And when Tom sent this, like I already, I just love it so much. He sent this program, and I turned the mix all the way up, and I turned this down a little bit. I think it was like there, and like the tone knob was there, and I just played this note. And I was like, that's the most perfect sound I've ever heard. And again, some of you know exactly what I'm talking about, and some of you think I'm crazy, but like it was over at that point. I'm like, we even talked about changing it a little bit after that, or Tom did, and I was like, no, we're not never changing this ever, because it's perfect. And uh, anyway, this is the tone. This is the tone. It's a slightly resonant low-pass filter, which is very nice. All, all of uh, the programs on this channel have that, have that filter on it. Uh, so anyway, I've talked about that one a lot. I really love it. It's like I'm crazy about it. Um, Let's go to the shimmer mode. The shimmer mode is like two f f freeze pedals that have an LFO attached. One is freezing incoming audio, and the other one is playing back the frozen audio, and they're switching roles. Uh, and there's an LFO that's switching the roles. And the rate that that's happening is the decay knob here. Um, so maybe I'll turn it all the way wet so you can really hear it. I'll turn the tone knob all the way up too. Um, and just, so that's really fast. 
and this would be slower. You can hear it, it's freezing. And playing it back. Uh, the modify knob here, the reason we called it a sh shimmer is that I wanted a shimmer, but I hate shimmer. So we wanted to make a cool shimmer. And uh, this modify knob either turns up uh, the pitch an octave or it does a sub octave. And I won't talk about it right now, but I really love using this channel with the world channel. I love it. Uh, the black channel is crazy and amazing. And uh, it's like an auto freeze kind of a thing, infinite re re reverb sort of a dealy. Um, and if you play something, it just plays forever. And this knob acts as a threshold. So if you turn the threshold up, uh, you can keep playing stuff. And it keeps like adding to the complexity of the sound. This is the volume. And if you want to clear it out to make a new sound, um, you have to defeat this threshold, which I'm going to do because I'm going to play hard. Oh, it's a new sound, you know? Um, and man, again, I'm not going to get into it right on this because I'm supposed to do the intro and Dan's getting mad at me because it's getting too long. But when you combine it with this channel, it's very special. Um, and yeah, that's the volume. You can ramp that to do crazy stuff too. The world channel, I'll try to keep sh short because it's a little more straightforward. Um, you have this spring setting here, which is just a really awesome spring algorithm. Um, you know, it does the things. It does the spring things, the spring stuff. Um, it also has a pre-delay knob, which you might be thinking, why would there be a pre-delay knob on a spring setting? That's outrageous. And you know what, you'd be right, but we would say, who cares, because it's a cool control to have, because especially with the spring setting, um, it's like a slap back thing, if you want it, you know? Right, Zach? Zach loves that stuff. Um, so the spring's great. It's a spring. Then there's the plate setting. And when we were working on this channel, my favorite program when we started working on it was the hall, but now it's the plate. And I, I'm going to turn the dwell way up because I'm a goofball. But like... I mean, come on. Sounds so good, right? And I mean, now just imagine all the fun you're going to have when you use this stuff with this stuff, with the free stuff. It's, it's a hoot. Um, and then there's the hall setting here, which, like I said, still love it. Just not a, quite as much as the plate. And, um, you know... Sounds like a hall, because that's the name of it. And it also has the pre-delay setting, um, which again, it's really nice to have the pre-delay setting on one of the channels, because when you use that in conjunction uh, with the dark channel, you're able to split up the reflections a little bit, uh, either in parallel or in series. Um, the tone control is a little bit more normal on uh, the world side. You know, just like a tone control. This is like a pretty gentle low pass filter. It doesn't have uh, the resonance that the dark channel does. Um, and that's all I'm gonna say, because it's been a long time. It's too long of a video. Uh, I'll do some other, I'll do some other videos where I show off some of my favorite settings, but that's just kind of a general overview.